Tope Falerin is a Nigerian-American writer. He won the Kane Prize for African Writing in 2013 and was shortlisted once again in 2016. He was also named to the 2014 Africa 39 list of the most promising African writers under 40. A Particular Kind of Black Man is his first book. An engrossing storyteller, Tope Falerin crafts marvelous sentences that act as clear panes of glass through which one glimpses an upside-down world. His fable-like novel is playful in its nostalgia, painful in its examination of how ready-made beliefs are overlaid onto the minds of children while they struggle to find a self. Falerin captures the surreal judder that comes from growing up in America and then leaving it to return to the country you're supposedly from. His work is threaded with secrets, some that must be broken open and brought to life, and others that must be held close to the heart. I'm reading from my novel. It's called A Particular Kind of Black Man. I am in Lagos, Nigeria, and I am looking for my mother. My cousin places his hand on my shoulder and gently nudges me to the left. I pause to glance at him. He looks so much like my mother that maybe he should have been my mother's son. The sun is throbbing above us. It's beating a strange rhythm into my body, something I've never felt before. He points down the street above the stalls and bobbing heads. I nod and begin to walk, but then my cousin grabs my arm. Are you sure you're ready? He asks. I smile confidently. It's actually a frown disguised as a smile. I'm sure anyone can see this. Yes, I've been waiting for this for a long time. My cousin smiles kindly, but there's something indecipherable there in the corners of his lips. We walk past the tall, crumbling building. The exterior is composed of some kind of yellow stone, now chipped in many places, and the roof is tin. Green vines finger every available crevice, and, the, and long lizards scoot across the walls, so fast and green that it seems like they've been exiled from some ancient myth. I glance at my cousin again. He smiles ruefully. Before us stands an arch. We pass beneath it into a wide courtyard. All around us, the windows reflect the light, and clothes are strung from lines that crisscross the open space above our heads. I glance up at the sky. The sun is beaming down on me, like a booming flash before an impossibly large camera takes my picture. I have never felt this uncomfortable in the sun, so aware of how conspicuous it is. Has it always been this bright? Maybe a different sun shines over this courtyard, an angrier sun. I'm afraid I might go blind staring at the sun like this, so I look down, and only now do I realize that the ground beneath my feet is pure gold. The wind is picking up. The windows are screaming with light. I look back up. Now I see the sky peeking through the gaps between the shirts and pants, and I can't tell if the sky is too low or the clothes too high, because the water blue air above my head seems close enough to touch, and the clothes are so distant that they look like multicolored clouds, clouds with buttons and zippers and pockets and sleeves. My thoughts are too loud, too loud. I close my eyes. In the darkness, with my thoughts bumping against my eyelids, I begin to breathe more easily. I listen to myself inhale and exhale. I feel my cousin again, his love for me passing through his hand into my shoulder. My heart slows some. I feel the heat from the sun settling on my face. I do not have to look up at the sky to know that the sun has returned to its normal size. When I open my eyes, I see the clothes swing gently from the clotheslines and the decaying concrete beneath my feet. The windows are still shining, but benevolently. I feel my body returning to itself, and now I understand why I lost my composure. I can no longer hear the din of Lagos, the cars and buses and curses and pigeon. My anxious thoughts expanded themselves to make up for the sudden absence of sound. Even now, looking around, the silence is amplifying everything. This silence feels permanent, not like a placeholder for something to come. <laughs>